In this video, I'd like to introduce some hidden gem mods that I recently chose to enhance Skyrim. I've added mods from various genres and tested them firsthand through live gameplay. Since I think they're quite good and shouldn't be limited to just my use, I want to share them with all of you. So without further ado, let's get started. First, I tried using Skoglendi and Folkvanger grass mods together. Usually, you would choose one of these mods rather than using them together, but I decided to use both of them this time. They matched quite well, and the variety of grass types in the tundra area around Whiterun increased, making it much more pleasant to look at. Especially, Skoglendi had excellent grass quality and high grass density, but it had a flaw of having few grass types. By using it with Folkvanger, I was able to improve that drawback considerably. I arranged Skoglendi below Folkvanger and Nolvis Ascension Grass mashup below that. Watch the video and try it yourself if you like it. Next up is HD Remastered Northern Roads, Complex Parallax. This is a mod that I introduced to you before. It improves the landscapes, architecture, and clutter significantly. I thought it was a bit unnatural that the roads in a game like Skyrim were too well polished. Northern Road changes these roads to dirt roads, which I liked the most. The architecture and clutter in between also enhance the immersion. Especially, the landscape that looks like it is cracked by drought was very impressive. However, I disabled Lux Via because of the overlapping sections with the architecture. I only enabled the Lux, Resources plugin, and disabled the rest. I think Northern Roads definitely changes the field environment of Skyrim in a remarkable way. It has a bit of a bright dirt feeling, but it is one of the mods that I think is excellent in its own way. Next, I would like to talk about the city-related mods that I have used. First of all, Open Cities Skyrim. I saw that Nolvis V6 applied the Open Cities system and I wanted to try it out. Moreover, I enjoy traveling with Dev Aveza, and I wanted to dock Dev Aveza in the town immediately without moving to the town cell with Open City Skyrim. However, since Open City Skyrim deactivates the town interior cell itself, I had to deactivate all the building mods that move to the town interior cell, such as JK's The Bee and Barb, JK's Elgrim's Elixirs, and so on. And the town frame also felt lower, but it was not unplayable. One of the things that I liked about Open City's Skyrim was that I could climb up the wall of Whiterun with the Sky Climb system and enter the Whiterun town directly. Being able to go in and out of the town interior and exterior without loading is a clear merit of this mod. Next up is the Great City of Falkreath, Winterhold, Dawnstar, and Morthal. Although I introduced four cities all at once, they are actually four separate mods. Each mod upgrades the cities with splendid visuals. The previously introduced Whiterun, Riften, Markath, Solitude used Open Cities Skyrim to remove the interior cells and apply the exterior cells, while Falkreath, Winterhold, Dawnstar, and Morthal used the Great City mod to further enhance the visuals. Cities like Falkreath and Winterhold were still manageable in terms of frame rate, but Dawnstar and Morthal had quite a lot of frame drops. Despite that, I chose to improve Dawnstar and Morthal with this mod because they were cities that I rarely visited, and I wanted to improve the appearance of the cities and visit them more often while playing, even if the frame rate dropped. The city's appearance changed quite nicely, but you should keep in mind that the cell where the Lord of Falkreath stays is incompatible with Lux and needs a compatibility patch. Next up is Forgotten Dungeons SSE. This is a very old mod that was released in 2016. Forgotten Dungeons adds 50 new Radiant Quest enabled dungeons and 15 extra dungeons to the game. Some reviews complain that it takes too long to clear the dungeons, but I think there is no mod as awesome as this one for exploring. In fact, as I play more and more, I lose interest in the main quest story that I already know, and I find it much more fun to explore the dungeons and develop my character. That's why I wanted more dungeons that I could explore comfortably without being connected to the usual dungeons or quests that I visit, 
so I added Forgotten Dungeons. There are many different dungeons, and it's fun to explore the Skyrim world and find them, as well as to loot items from the dungeons. It's a great mod that adds a lot of enjoyment to the game. Next, I'm going to talk about some mods that I recommend for creatures. First, there is Indrix. This creature is made by the creator Mihail, and it adds a deer-shaped creature that uses magic to the area around Falkreath. There are not many creatures around Falkreath, and only the minotaurs of Forthak Known roam around, so I added this mod because I wished this area was more filled with creatures. In fact, I used an older version of this mod in the past, and I remember that the magic they used was quite noisy. But in the recent version, the magic has been somewhat calmed down, and the appearance of the creature has also been improved a lot. However, there was a problem that they fought each other, maybe because they had different factions from the goblin creatures of Forthak Known. But since this was a creature that I enjoyed using, I decided to add it this time, and I hope you will try it too if you like it. Next up is Mihail Imp. If you are a fan of Oblivion, you might have missed this creature a lot. I added it to my game with this mod. There is also an imp creature by Fourth Unknown, but I was already using it, and I added Mihail's one as well. Mihail's imp seems to attack the player more aggressively. I recently found a few of them around Lake Illinalta, and they seemed to be quite common in the fields near Falkreath. It is one of the creatures that I enjoy using in my game. Next up is Giant Creature Replacer. This mod is something I made by combining meshes from Mihail's creatures and Dark Souls weapons using Outfit Studio. I made this about three years ago, and I had to release it as a video because I couldn't get a reply from Mihail. I didn't like seeing the giants in the tundra naked, so I gave them some armor and they look pretty cool. They also have great swords instead of clubs, but they still have a club-like feel to them. If you want to change the look of the original Giants, you should try this mod. I'm introducing this mod, but I want to make it clear that Mihail is the original author, and if he doesn't want me to share this, I will delete it anytime. Please understand this part. This time, I'm going to introduce you to an outfit combination. The outfit combination I'm going to show you today is Ebony Valkyrie Armor, Ebony Bikini Armor, and Black Desert Karlstein Cloak. First, I wore the Ebony Valkyrie armor for the top. I think it's a suit of armor that accentuates the female body line well. However, I didn't like the part where the shoulder pads were too pointed and soared upwards, so I removed it. I deleted the partition through Outfit Studio. For the rest, I wore the gauntlets, belly guard, neck guard, boots, and knee pads from the Ebony Bikini armor. Finally, I wore the Black Desert Karlstein Cloak to emphasize the dark feeling. However, the Black Desert Karlstein Cloak does not apply the physical effects properly unless it is a Karlstein outfit, so you need to modify the bedorkarlsteincloak.xml file. You need to open the bedorkarlsteincloak.xml file and add virtual body collision so that the cloak does not go through the body. Please be careful about this part. That's all for the video about the hidden gem mods that I added to enhance my Skyrim in 2024. Even though these are the mods that I added, there are quite a lot of mods that you can also add, so feel free to install the ones that you like. If this video was helpful, please subscribe, like, and turn on the notifications. I will see you again in the next video with a better look. Until then, have fun Skyrim.